Hi everyone, it's Justine. I have two handbags here, one by Desigual and one by Chloe. I thought it would be interesting to look at them, to look into them and to compare them. This one costs under 50 euros and this one costs around 1,400 euros. So will the expensive one be of better quality than the cheaper one? It's very likely. <laughs> and so it's not gonna be the scoop of the video. What I wanna do is rather show you which materials and which design elements to look for, what is gonna last longer or less long and where the brands might have saved money in the corner. Today's video is for you if you want to learn more about handbag quality in general so that the next time that you go handbag shopping, you're an expert and you know exactly what you're getting for your money. Let's go. Let's start with the most important thing that is the material. Starting with the Chloe one. Here you see two different materials used for the main fabric, so to speak. This is smooth leather and this is suede. And it matters in leather how big the surface is of each piece. So this is a pretty big piece. And so is this. And so is the back part. And this is an extremely important cost factor when talking about production costs. The Desigual bag is completely soft. Um, they're using <laughs> vegan leather, uh, which is the PVC in this case. And you can see that it's plastic in the end because in the corners it's already starting to come off a little bit so that would not happen with leather. On this one you also see a bit of printing issues. There are stains that are not printed exactly clean on here. Here you can even see how the color is coming off or wasn't printed intensely enough. With this you can tell that it's only a print and it's not the fabric itself. And it's the same for leather. Sometimes you have a python pattern printed onto cow leather. With mistakes like this you can see that it's not actual python leather. Beware when you see vegan leather on accessories because most of the time it's actually PVC so plastic that they're trying to sell as vegan leather because it sounds cooler. It's not something to encourage in my opinion. However, now there are brands that are launching actual options, <laughs> alternatives to leather, like pineapple leather, which is completely uh, vegetal based, mushroom leather that looks really cool when it gets older and worn. Hermes have recently launched their first handbag that is made in a vegan leather alternative. So it's a sign that things are changing in the leather <laughs> industry. But be sure that you're not buying vegan leather that is actually plastic because it's really not worth your money. Point number two, hardware. Look at the metal pieces on a handbag. This is completely standard. So is that part with the attachment here. This is probably custom made because it has the logo on it, but they use it for every handbag of the brand. So they do have huge production quantities of this. Same one used here again. Whereas on this bag, you can see that the hardware is completely custom made for this design, these elements here, this ring. The closure is maybe standard to the brand, but everything else is really custom made. And for this one design, it comes in different colors even here. One thing that does bother me on the Desigual bag, because it is so soft and slouchy, I would have expected to have some kind of protection here because I could not put this bag on the floor without damaging it. It would be better if it had little feet in the four corners. And if there was an inlay inside making this part more stable so that it wouldn't touch the floor. When I say custom hardware costs a lot more to produce. This ring, this chain, this exact joint here, this connection. This is all created specifically for the Chloe Phi line. It couldn't be used for any other Chloe bag because they look completely different. And a bag like this produces in much smaller quantities anyway than this one, because that one comes, well, when I got it, it was coming in a ton of new colors every season, design and hardware and all the other elements staying the same across season. So it's really a huge difference indeed in the cost and that should clearly, logically, be also reflected in the retail price. That brings us to my next point, also an important cost factor, and that is the construction of each bag. Okay, we're going inside. <laughs> the lining. It's not good or bad to have a lining, it depends, but cheaper bags often have a lining because underneath you can sew 
whatever you want and nobody's going to see it because it's going to be covered by the lining. If you do have a lining, it should be big enough, it should be bigger than the outside shell, but unlike it's done here, it should be attached to the bottom. Otherwise it's going to make folds and you're going to lose your pens in the folds. <laughs> if you don't have a lining, it means that the sewing on the inside needs to be absolutely impeccable. Here you see naked leather everywhere. So the seam finishing has to be absolutely perfect and so has to be the quality of the leather. See the construction here is a lot more complex and there's a lot more that could go wrong in production if it's not executed properly. Then the edge paint. Ooh, I don't know if we can hear it on camera. This bag is a little bit older and I can hear the plastic <laughs> cracking. So the edge paint is a way of cleaning the edges and making them more durable. Here it's done with the uh, cheap paint that is going to crack if I pull on it. <laughs> don't want to destroy it, but it's just to show you. This will come off eventually. On actual leather, you can't tell the difference. It's an exact match to the color of the leather. It looks a lot cleaner. Edge paint is a thing, like even on this bag, it might come off eventually or get damaged through wear and tear, but you can easily have that repainted by the kind of service that also repairs shoes or repaint bags, like edge paint is a very standard procedure. They will find the exact match to the color of your leather. When it dries, it will you nobody will be able to tell that he has been repainted. So I recommend that you try this, even on your existing bags that look a little bit worn. Um, this is an easy way to pimp your bag back into shape. Now let's look at the sewing for a second, because that's also a very good way of recognizing if the bag has good quality. You will have top stitching here for a zipper, always absolutely necessary. But here, when you look at that lining, you see how they finished it? Sloppy, sloppy. This is very quick sewing, low quality production, for sure. Now, you look at the inside of this one, and you can see perfect top stitching. So the edges are not actually raw. See, they're painted, of course, but they're also top stitch everywhere for stability, including at the bottom, on the outside everywhere, and on the strap itself. This is brilliant quality work, because on leather, if you make one mistake and you have to undo a stitch, you have a hole in the leather. So zero tolerance for mistake when you're sewing leather. This is really good craftsmanship. Both bags have an adjustable strap. This is a little bit loose, like it, it could have a little cuff here to hold this in place. This one has it right here. And because they're fancy, they also have here a little cuff to prevent this from coming open. Very fancy. Boom. Voila. Very important point to look at is the point where the bag meets the strap or the handles, if you have shorter handles than this. On the Desigual bag, the weight is going to be carried by this little loop of the material. And I can tell you because I've seen it happen, the first point of this bag that will break is here. Whereas on the Chloe bag, it's much more sophisticated. You have a loop of fabric, then you have metal on metal, and you have this angle which means that the weight is going to be carried by the metal. It's a lot more durable. So when you go handbag shopping, make sure that you check this connection. Where is the weight going to be carried by the strap on a crossbody bag? Because that has a huge influence on how long your bag is basically going to last. Next point, the design slash the specialness. When you buy a luxury item like this one, you want it to be special. And this one, I think, is an absolute classic. It's beautiful craftsmanship, as I said. This is something every time I wear it, I'm happy and I feel like I'm wearing a beautiful piece. This one does the job too, for sure. That's a handbag as well, no question. But it's the one that I might take when I go party. And if somebody spills a drink onto it, I don't really mind. I just take a sponge and wipe it off. This one, I'd be a lot more annoyed. <laughs> And it's actually a, a funny story because I've had my eyes on this bag for multiple years, literally. But every year that I save for it, I end up saying, you know what, I don't need that bag. I can take the money and put it into 
producing a part of my next clothing collection, so I never bought it. And then last year, when COVID started and the luxury brands raised their prices like mad, I panicked. <laughs> I didn't want to pay even more for this one, so I ended up getting it. Turns out, Chloe didn't raise their prices too much, but I can tell you with confidence that I have not regretted buying that bag a single time. I find this bag absolutely timeless and elegant. If I ever want to sell it again uh, later in the future, I will get almost my money back for it because it really holds its value nicely. Unless Chloe discontinues that design, <laughs> in which case the price will even go up. <laughs> if you're interested in purchasing this exact design, I will put some links down below in the description with new and secondhand options because when I got mine, I considered both options. So I did a bit of research on that. And it also depends on the design that you want. You can have this and this in a different color. There is even uh, some choice in bags that have this in one color, this in another one. So it's fun to match it with your outfits. And this metal hardware here also comes in different colors. Have you ever looked at a luxury handbag like this close up? What do you think of the quality? Do you think that the price is justified? I would love to hear your opinion in the comments. Since you watch until you're here, <laughs> two more videos for you if you wanna watch something else from my channel. The first one will be 10 timeless handbag designs that I think are good investment pieces that hold their value or even go up in value secondhand because there are people who invest in handbags just like you could invest in stocks or old timer cars. And the second video will be handbag history. How come that we're carrying this kind of accessory around with us like this? Where does it come from? When did it start? I love a good bit of fashion history. Both videos will be linked here in the corner and down below in the video description for you. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel before you go watch the other ones. Take care, bye-bye.